Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today I want to talk about sharpness. Now sharpness is an ambiguous term in this context because in cameras, sharpness for the sake of this discussion is really just one's ability to not create a blurry image. That, that essentially you've achieved full focus on whatever it is that is your subject in your image. In image editors, sharpness really doesn't have anything to do with that and in a way requires a sharp image to begin with to get the full effect of what increasing sharpness in PaintShop Pro means. And we'll take a look at that in greater detail. As well, we'll walk through the different sharpness tools that are available in PaintShop Pro. Um, and although this is kind of tangential, I'll also at the very end just touch a little bit on some techniques and how to improve optical sharpness, in-camera sharpness, um, as you're taking the picture. All right, let's get into it. So when we're talking about sharpness in PaintShop Pro, what we're actually doing or what we're talking about is an effect called accutance. And Wikipedia defines accutance in this way. In photography, the term accutance describes a subjective perception of sharpness that is related to the edge contrast of an image. So essentially, what this is just saying is when we use a sharpness adjustment tool, what PaintShop Pro is doing is first finding the edges, and this is key, first finds the edges and then applies contrast just to where those edges are. So just thinking about that definition, you can see how um, it's important for the image to have some manner of optical sharpness before it can do the enhancement. So let's take a quick look at what we mean in terms of finding edges. So in PaintShop Pro, there's actually a really simple way that you can get an idea of what PaintShop Pro defines as an edge, and we'll do a few experiments to understand that exactly. So looking at this image I'm starting with, I have a gray background and I have a lighter gray rectangle. So in my mind, an edge in this case would be any point where the light gray meets the dark gray. And what we can do is if we go into effects, edge effects, and find all, when we click on that, what we'll notice is PaintShop Pro will display what it thinks as is, is an edge. And so in this case, the darker lines here represent the edge and white means everything else. So this is a very clear cut example of even just slight differences in gray, it'll consider an edge. So we saw an example with grays. Now let's look at color. And what's interesting, if we grab the pick tool um, and we look at these two colors, I have a green, which is a full 255 and nothing else. And I have a red, which is a full 255 and nothing else. So one could um, determine that luminance wise these two values are the same and the only difference between them is color so the question is what will the edge tool d detect when there's only a difference difference in color rather than luminance so we try find all again once again we see it does detect it as an edge so whether it's a difference in grays or luminance or it's a difference in color paint shop pro will identify it as an edge so one more example now I have a fully red background and I have a rectangle that has a gradient fill. So it goes from pure red, which is essentially what the background is, to pure black. So this is where it'd be interesting to see as we get closer and closer to the color that we're starting with, how does PaintShop Pro define an edge in this case? So what we see is the edge is most pronounced at the top where the black was and the red were next to each other. But as we get closer to where the reds were the same, we can see that that edge becomes less pronounced. So what this implies is that PaintShop Pro adds a weight to how strong the edge is. And when we start applying things like contrast to an edge, it'll probably be weaker here and much stronger up here. So continuing on with the edge concept, I have a photograph of a baby pineapple and next to it, I have a intentionally blurred version of the same thing. Now, keeping in mind once again that applying sharpness relies on PaintShop Pro's ability to find an edge and then increase contrast. This is con accutance. So, so to be able to do sharpness in this tool, 
um, it has to be able to first find an edge. Now, we'll take the right image as an example of, let's say you just took the photo out of focus. And if we go to edge effects once again and do find all, what we see tells us a whole lot. So when we look at the left image, which was pretty sharp to begin with, optically sharp in this case, you can see there's very dark edges and very clear, clearly defined edges that PaintShop Pro could work with if you, you were to use a sharpening tool. By contrast, if we come back over to the blurry or the optically not sharp pineapple, you can see there's hardly any dark lines, there's no sharp lines. So if PaintShop Pro were to try to apply sharpening anywhere on this image, it wouldn't really do anything. So this really just uh, hammers home the point that Accutants can't fix an optically blurry image. It can only enhance an image that was optically sharp to begin with. So now let's come back to our original gray on gray example um, and walk through the sharpening tools to get a better idea of what they actually do. So here you'll see I'm zooming way in because we're gonna need to get this close to really see what's happening. So we go into adjust, we go to sharpness, and we'll start with the simplest ones. We'll start with just sharpen. This is a pre-canned, you know, it just makes a slight modification. And if you saw that, if we consider what Accutance does, it finds the edge and increases contrast. If we grab our pick tool, we'll see we're kind of hovering at 192 in this region and about 128 in this region. But if we look where the Accutance applied, we kind of dropped down by eight luminance values here, and then we increased by eight on the bright side. So the brighter grays went brighter, the darker gray went darker. So now let's do the same thing, but let's go to sharpness and sharpen more. So once again, the same, same thing. It seems like the radius might have been a little bit larger because more pixels were affected. Grab our pick tool again, still at 192, but raised all the way up to 215. So a bigger jump in luminance on the bright side and from 128 to something as low as 95 or 106. So again, this is exactly what Accutance is, is finding the edge and applying contrast to that edge. And these are the sharpen and the sharpen more are just different levels of a very light application of contrast at the edge. So now, Let's look at the high pass sharpen. So this gives you a little bit more control. And in this case, apart from being able to change the blend mode um, and the strength, this really just affects beyond the sharpen and sharpen more uh, what degree you want to apply it. But really changing these only affects the, the level of contrast along with strength. Um, but but it's it's really not a very strong effect, and so let's let's look at just that for now, and then we'll talk about radius in a second. But if we apply that once again, do the pick tool 129 to 112, or even down to 104. Same thing. This side's 193, all the way up to 200. All right. So same same sort of thing. So if we come back into high pass sharpen and we make it about as hard as we can, but we start increasing the radius, which you'll notice if you look at that edge is suddenly more pixels are being affected. So you can think of the radius as saying, how far away from my detected edge am I going to impact where that contrast is going to be? It's a little bit harder to see how it's being affected on the light side than the dark side, but Essentially, this side is getting brighter and it's going in this direction. This side's getting darker and it's going in this direction. So that's what the radius does. So now we'll end off with the ultimate sharpness tool, which is the unsharp mask. And this one works exactly the same way as all the other tools, except this one has much greater magnitude, if you will. You can, you can push the limits much harder on this than any of the others. And so, for example, the strength's already at 100, and you can see the, the darker side is getting darker in the edge, the lighter side is getting lighter. We have radius, just like the high-pass sharpen, but I can crank this much higher 
and you can start to see that effect is really starting to get to the point where we're, we're almost making pixels black and white along this edge. And if I start increasing the radius, this almost kind of creates like a pipe effect. So we can zoom out and you can see increasing the contrast with such a large radius now creates a halo on one side and what looks almost like a shadow on the other. If we zoom all the way out, you could say, oh yes, that's a very high contrast line, but it really almost kind of gets away from what the original intent was. So let's bring it back up again. Now one other thing to note is this clipping line. And what this is really doing is it's acting as a threshold of being able to detect an edge. So for example, if I come back in here with my pick tool and I notice that the gray is 192, the dark is 128, so that difference is somewhere around 60 to 70. So as long as I allow my clipping to be smaller than 60 or 70, it's going to have some sort of effect. It's going to um, apply its, its, its effect. Now, so you can see in this really strong case, it's very obvious. But if I start dragging this up to something like 70, suddenly the effect is gone because the delta between these two is no greater than that value. But as I start creeping it back, we'll start to see the effect begin to show up once again until we get all the way back down to, I think it was like five. Um, and then we should see the, the full effect like we've seen before. Now, interesting to note, finally, is that if you increase the radius super large, then what, what, what in effect is going to happen is now the contrast that would have been applied to an edge is expanded so much that it really just affects the entire image. So then what you get now is a new kind of contrast tool. And we'll look at an image to understand maybe a little bit better than this simple example of what applying contrast through unsharp mask does. So to close out the discussion of sharpness using the sharpness tools, um, I typically use it whenever possible. Um, when I shoot in RAW, I always crank up the sharpness in my RAW editor. Um, otherwise, I don't really use it in PaintShop Pro if I've already used it in Digital Photo Pro or whatever uh, or whatever RAW tool you use. However, if I ever resize an image, more typically making one smaller, then I'll usually, I'll usually do some kind of sharpening after just because the interpolation tends to kind of soften things at times and just a little bit of high pass or even just the standard sharpen or sharpen more can just kind of crisp it up um, before posting it online or whatever other medium by which you like to share your photos. So here I have an image of a flower and what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer just so that I can show the effect a little bit easier after I've applied it. But we will bring up the unsharp mask and right now it's already in settings that will apply contrast rather than sharpness because our radius is maxed out. We have a decent amount of strength and a standard amount of clipping and I'll apply that and you can see it is higher contrast. If I, if I kind of turn it off and turn it on, it'll be a little bit more obvious what the contrast was. But you'll notice that this contrast is quite different than if we were to apply something like levels. So actually, I can, I can do that just to uh, make the point a little bit more obvious. We'll bring up brightness contrast. We'll go to levels. And this seems like a good set of settings here. It's kind of darkened some things. It's kind of brightened some things. So now I've got the levels, and I'm going to bring back the unsharp mask version. So you can see unsharp mask doesn't darken as much as levels did because levels brings up the, the darks uh, in the histogram. But there's still contrast being applied by comparison that, to the original image, which is what we see here. So unsharp mask applies contrast different than other tools. It's a unique kind of contrast, and you'll just need to experiment with it to determine if it's the type of contrast you want to use for the image you're working on.
If you'd like to learn more about contrast, you can watch my other video that I do a whole entire segment on all of the different contrast tools that are available in PaintShop Pro. Okay, so we've defined and made the distinction of sharpness between image editing and in-camera, and we've walked through all the different sharpness tools that are available in PaintShop Pro. So now we'll end off just talking about some general tips for how to get optically more sharp images, and a lot of it just revolves around how you use focus in your camera. One of the key aspects of determining focus when you're using autofocus is there's um, focus nodes. Usually, if you have a really advanced camera uh, or a really expensive camera, it actually can detect which node your eye is looking at, and so then anywhere on the grid can be a node and it'll focus on wherever you're looking. For less advanced cameras like I have, uh, one tip that I would recommend is instead of allowing the autofocus to pick randomly which focus node it's going to use, um, always force it to be the middle. So um, then it's totally predictable that wherever you point that node at is what you're going to use as your reference for um, determining what's going to be in focus. So what that means, though, is that in practical use, uh, the, you have to make use of the half shutter in that you'll want to point that center reticle, that center focus point on whatever it is you want to use as your point of focus and half shutter it to lock in where that focus point is, then reframe the image and push it the rest of the way to take the picture. This is often a technique used for exposure and many other things, but uh, it works very well for focus as well. The other thing to consider is that the way the focus system works in most digital cameras is whatever you're pointing that focus point at, it's trying to achieve and determine the clearest contrast. So similar to Accutance, but different. It's trying to determine the clearest contrast of pixels that are in that little box by adjusting the focus. So it goes back and forth. And so what you typically want to point it at, if you're going to point it at your subject, is a spot where there is a very clear dark and light somewhere in that box. So looking at an example image, you can see here or perhaps here are not good examples of locations to uh, use as a focal point. If you were to move the reticle here or even here, these would be two really good examples of places where your autofocus is going to be able to very quickly and very accurately determine what the focus should be to get your subject as crisp as possible. As, as a fun example, if you were to take that autofocus point and put it on something like a perfectly blank wall or a, something that is just completely one color and have it try to achieve focus, you'll probably see it zooming in back and forth trying to achieve focus and eventually either giving up or railing because it can't find any contrast to figure out where the focus should be all right well that's it i hope this was helpful i hope you have a much better understanding of sharpness both in camera and in paint shop pro as always if you have any questions leave a comment below and if you'd like updates go ahead and click click the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.